So we are kicking off 2020 with Lawrence visiting Google. So wanted to hear, Lawrence, how is your 2020 going? How's the um, new year? It's been good so far. You know, I got to explore the Google campus. It's like pretty amazing. Um, it's huge. Uh, Google Cloud is awesome. Um, yeah, no complaints. Um, Chinese New Year was great. Um, got to celebrate with my uh, cousins and um, uh, my fiance came too and her mom came too. So it was the first time her mom was able to meet uh, my family. So yeah, and it was, it was cool. And any like favorite memories from Lunar New Year that you've had in the past? <clears throat> um, I guess uh, this past New Year's, uh, we play this game where we have to like, we have to transfer a bowl of rice to another bowl with chopsticks. <laughs> and it's wow. sort of like, a, it's like a relay race between, um, you know, families and then we just, whoever wins gets a red envelope. And we did that. So it was fun to have, um, you know, my fiance's mom there to experience that as well. So I'm guessing you have amazing chopstick skills. No, no, I don't. I'm oh. pretty terrible. I'm bad. So you didn't win? No, no, no. Oh. No. Maybe next year. Yeah, maybe next year. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Awesome. So as I said in my intro, you have had such an amazing career, um, touching dancing, touching musical instruments, touching acting. So can you share a little bit about how you got started and what inspired you to embark on this journey that I think is a little bit different from a lot of us in the room here today? I think it, you know, I think it all started on the piano. Um, my mom wanted me to play the piano um, ever since I was a little boy, like around five. And um, what's interesting was I just had lunch with my piano teacher and she was telling me that um, at first when I started playing, I didn't really care so much about it. But there was one day when, um, when, when another player was playing before me and I had some kind of aha moment like I felt some kind of emotion and I was like maybe six or something. And from then on, I just uh, wanted to play better. And I feel like it's, it's just that feeling um, when, when, when you feel this emotion, you get connected to this, this um, you get access to this other thing. And it's, it's a powerful feeling. And I think that's what sort of propelled me into doing um, things in the arts. Super cool. So talk to me a little bit more about those connections. So the connection to piano is apparent. What about the connection to dancing and to acting and uh, other instruments you may play? You know, uh, I didn't start getting into acting until high school. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it all began because I, I grew up with, with not so good kids around me. And I think at one point, I just decided to, I, I wanted to change my persona. And I feel like the biggest thing to juxtapose that was just to like, was just to start doing theater. Like I, I started doing some theater after school and it just felt more freeing. It felt like a, a new identity and I could step away from um, old friends that weren't necessarily good for me. And um, from then on, I just, you know, I got, I just got so attracted to um, what that feeling was. And I, I think that just propelled me to try to, to find that feeling in other art forms. And it's just like, it's not necessarily like, oh, it feels, it feels cool to perform. It was just more like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling like different kinds of emotions that I've never felt before. And yeah, and I thought that was really interesting. And I think that, you know, it's, it's something that, tran like, it, it transcends all kinds of art, mm -hmm. uh, whether you, you know, dance, sing, um, play instruments. I, I think, you know, I think anything in itself can be an art form too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how you, how, you, um, how you decide to, you know, go about doing things. For sure, and I think many of us here are interested in the arts, maybe um, outside of work as an extracurricular, but I think it's definitely very interesting that you took that passion um, and turned that into your actual career. So can you speak to your thoughts on like when you were acting after school and now acting for Netflix and acting in all these big shows, how did that emotional progression happen? Um, so, well, 
it, I think it, it all began, I, I started doing these small sketches after school um, just for fun. And um, I got into uh, a main stage play in high school. It's called A Midsummer Night's Dream, a Shakespeare play. And um, this was my junior year of high school. And, and um, on opening night of the play, you know, I, I, got, I got arrested for like s wrongfully accused for something I didn't do. And, you know, that, that threw me for a loop because I was in jail and I, I was thinking to myself, what, what's like, it, I, you know, like what's happening? I, I, w I was in jail for like three days and, um, and then someone told me I was going to be there for over at least 40 years. So in my head, in that moment, I, 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 the only thing that kept me sane, I feel like, was, was me running these lines that I had memorized for this play. And, and you know, I was, I was young, and then the whole time I was thinking, what am I going to do after, after like 40 years? I don't know if the, the officer that told me that I was going to spend 40 years was telling me the truth, but in my head, I was, I was just like, yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen. And um, uh, luckily enough, I was, I was let out a week later, and I, I went back to high school, and um, it was the closing night of the show, and then my, my director asked me if I still remembered my lines, and I was like, yeah, let's go do, let's do this. And when I was on stage, that, that was the moment where it was, I knew for sure this is what I wanted to do for, you know, for the rest of my life, like this is my job. And so that was, a, you know, I feel like I got really lucky because you know people don't really get that um, people don't really get that answer at a, at a young age. You know, you you know we're we're always still trying to figure out what that is. But you know something clicked, and just how I felt on stage that night made me decide to um, continue to be an actor. And I changed my major to um, to drama. Went to UC Irvine for theater. Wow, that's a super super intense story. Thank you for sharing that with us. I, I know it must have been extremely traumatizing. You know what? At, at, at first, not really. I think, I think looking back at it now, <laughs> it, seems, later. it seems traumatizing now, but I feel like in the moment, in that moment, it, it was just so bizarre to me. I was just in a weird situation where, where I felt I was going to get let out that day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you guys made a huge mistake. What am I doing here? And then but after a few days, that's when when it kicks in, wow. and you're just tripping out, and yeah. I can imagine. But those lines kept you sane. They actually helped you cope. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's interesting because my mom, she's she's always asking me, "Why why did you decide to do this?" Mm -hmm. And I always tell her, "Like, well, you you made me get get into the arts. Mm -hmm. You're the one that wanted me to do that." And it's so interesting because Asian parents, they they make you do all this artistic stuff as a kid. Like, or, or they force you sometimes and, and they want you to do something else. They want so you, true. Yeah, so you're, you're just so confused. But then you realize, you realize it's probably, probably because they wanted to do it themselves. So they probably have an inner struggle. Like they, they're probably feeling like, man, I wanted to do that. I never got the chance, but mm -hmm. I, I don't want him to, to fail. And, you know, and so it was that weird juxtaposition and, and, but it, it, it all worked out. And how did your mom feel when you made that leap and really decided to go for the arts full time? Yeah, she, was, she was definitely not happy. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell her I changed my major. So she found out while we were driving to um, uh, college. I told her, yeah, I'm, Awkward. I'm studying theater. <laughs> and she, was, she started crying. She was crying in the oh, back, no. back of the car. But she's not the kind of mom that tells me what to do. She lets me, quote unquote, fail, or you know, she she thinks it's it's just a phase and 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 I'll get over it. But she's a she's a good mom. I'm sure she is. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting because you found that this passion for acting kept you through that whole traumatic situation, and obviously you had found your passion. You changed your major. You went all in on that. But then talk to me about Kinjas. How did that happen? And how did you go into dancing first before you found your place with the acting world. So I went to college. It was it was at UC Irvine. And what what I what I didn't realize was that 
that Orange County is is a huge hub for all these up and coming um, um, hip hop dance groups. And so I'm on college. I, I, I'm at college and I see all these teams dancing. And and in my head, I'm like, man, I want I want to do that. So I just put myself out there, auditioned for whatever teams popped up and and whatever teams had auditions until I, I joined a, a dance team called Cabo Modern. And um, yeah, I feel like I, I got all my training um, through that dance team. And, and after doing America's Best Dance Crew, you know, um, uh, a group of guys just decided to get together and continue to dance just for fun. And, you know, one thing leads, leads to another. And, and now Kinjas is just this, this huge thing and they're all over the place and yeah yeah and it's and, cool to see and you had mentioned that you guys just celebrated your 10 year anniversary recently yeah 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 congratulations this last weekend, yeah. Thank it's amazing you. how many of you guys have watched kinjas super super <laughs> impressive it's like you guys don't have like joints and it's like that just moves like that like <laughs> amazing i can't even like i don't know do a basic flip <laughs> I'm impressed by them. Like they, they trip me out when I watch them because I don't really dance as much anymore. Only when I have like the free time or I have the desire to for fun. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of them, and it's crazy because they're just, you know, they're just really close friends. That's amazing. Yeah. And did those dance moves come in handy when you were training for Wu Assassins or any of your action packed? You know, like my character in Wu Assassins, he doesn't fight. The only thing he's fighting is his his drug habit because. <laughs> If you guys haven't watched it, I'm, I'm a heroin addict on the show. And um, so I don't fight. I get beaten up. And but the dancing did come in handy because there was a scene where um, I'm going to spoil it a little bit. There's some dead bodies that I have to clean up. And we were running out of time. And the director was like, we can only do this in one shot. Can you do some kind of like dance celebration while you're cleaning these dead bodies and like finding drugs and and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So, you know, it, it came in handy and yeah. Wow, I, I kind of really want to see that scene right now. Yeah, I'm not really you... sure how that visually all breaks <laughs> down, but cool. I'm sure dancing also helps you with reflexes, which is helpful when dodging it blows and dr yeah. drugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like being kinesthetically aware is very important when you're an actor, so it it's definitely helps. Okay, that's, that's great. Well, very inspiring. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I wonder, hope so. <laughs> yes, I mean, definitely very interesting, right? I think it's piqued all of our interest. I mean, definitely, if all of you guys have Netflix, go watch Wu Assassins, let him know what you think. Um, but in the meantime, well, you got we're here. I want to ask you if you have any tips for people who have interests and want to be more artistic or want to go explore their passions, but maybe have a day job at Google, which is great too. And I think it's still pretty cool, but maybe they want to go break out more and just go explore that side of themselves. Any tips and anything you have to share? Yeah, I think you just, you just have to go and do it. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You just gotta, just gotta go and do it. You can't wait for someone to inspire you. You have to be your own inspiration, and in order to, to feel that inspiration, you have to make, you have to make the art. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all different people, and we all know that. And so, whatever we make is going to be individual to that person. No one else can do what you guys can do. So, there is an artist in all of us. You know, when we were kids, you uh, all, all we would do growing up is play pretend. You know, that's mm -hmm. something that we were really good at, at at a young age. And so, just being able to tap into that. I feel like will help people inspire themselves and like take the next step to do something. And it doesn't matter if it's not good. It's just just the fact that you go and do something. It's yeah. totally great. When Nike said just do it, they had a lot of they did a lot of uh, truth in that. <laughs> Awesome. So switching gears a little bit, because this is hosted by the Asian Google Network and Talks at Google. So I just wanted to bring back the topic of race. I think race, um, when you think about the entertainment industry, there's not that many Asian males that have quite made it, mm -hmm. per se. So I'd like to understand your thoughts as you went about getting breaking into this field. How do you feel like your role as an Asian male impacted your career trajectory and impacted you with the moves that you did make? 
I mean, as an Asian American male, there are definitely less um, roles out there. There are less opportunities. Um, but you can either see that as something that's detrimental to your career, or you can, you know, turn that liability into an asset and just think about, like, you know, when you go into a room and they call, they call all, ethnic, all ethnicities into the room, you're going to get a bunch of, it's most likely just a bunch of Caucasians, and then you'll be like the only Asian, Asian guy in the room. And you can't let that discourage you. It just, you just have to think you're going to stand out. Because, mm -hmm. and it, it's just sad, but people have lower expectations for you. They think you're just not going to do as well. And so you can just go in and just kick some ass and you'll make a difference. But, you know, right now it's, it's, it's still very, there's a lot of progress, but there, there needs to be more. And there needs to be more support um, all across the board, all minorities, not just Asian Americans, you know. We got to support each other. Yeah, and I think there has been some progress for sure. I think ever since Crazy Rich Asians, I think the last two years especially, we've seen a huge breakout in just like more films, more topics, more conversation around that. Um, I'm curious for you with Mu Assassins, um, how did that process go about when you were running for, so running for uh, the role? And how was that experience for you? Um, how was the experience auditioning for the role? Yeah, that was the word I was looking for, auditioning um, for the role. Yeah, I mean, um, when I saw the breakdown for the character, this was something that I've always wanted to do. I like playing characters that are just, mm -hmm. you know, messed up. They have troubled pasts or things that they're dealing with. Heroin addictions. You know, it's just fun to tap into those things. You know, and... and <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why, it's just like there's like this masochistic feeling of feeling like shit just for a little bit. But, but, but being able to feel like that, truthfully, for some reason makes me feel good. And it, it, it's like, it's, it's, you, you go into a role and you feel like, man, you go into the role, b before you prep for a role, you think like, this is my life, this sucks. But after you're done working on it, you, you realize, man, this is not my life. And then you sort of get like a, oh man, that's, that's crazy to, to have to deal with what that guy deals with. And hopefully someone gets something out of it by watching this kind of character. But yeah, so when I, when I saw the breakdown for that character, it was just something that I, I had to go in for. And um, they didn't call me in originally for it. And I just said, I, I need to put myself on tape. So I put myself on tape, I sent it to my agents, and then, and then they, they told me, they were going to try to get me into the room because they liked the tape so much. And so got into the room, um, auditioned a few times, and yeah, I got the part. Well, um, we're very happy that you did. And you know what's crazy was it's shot in Vancouver. So I decided to take my car to Vancouver. But Border Patrol in Vancouver is insane. <laughs> and so I have this thing on my record. And then the officer said, you can't work here. Oh, no. So the thing that happened in high school could have potentially prevented me from actually doing this job. Cause, and, and so the, the officer told me he was going to try to figure it out. He was going to call a court in L.A. If no one picked up and talked about it, then um, if no one like, gave him a solution, then I wouldn't be able to enter um, Canada and I wouldn't be able to do the job. Wow, so what ended up happening? Um, they called the court and someone, someone said that everything was dismissed and it was, um, there, there should be no record. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's so crazy how something that happened so long ago could actually yeah, come back it and still comes back haunt and you crazy. in a way. Wow. So aside from acting, going back to that scene, because it seems to have been, been a recurring thing in your life, aside from how you coped in the days immediately after the incident, have you, been, have you ever thought back on that? Has it given you kind of like PTSD or a little bit of that type of feeling? Or No, not really. Okay. I feel like I take, I, when, I, when I think about that situation, it's more, it's more blessing for me. Because mm. if, that, if that didn't happen, I don't think I'd be where I am today. Mm, Especially with my, yeah, with this career. I don't think I would have gone this route. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So how about looking forward? Do you have any visions, any big goals that you'd like to share with us today? Um, 
getting married in um, October. Congratulations. I know your fiance is in the crowd. Del, say hi. <laughs> um, I, uh, I just finished writing a movie. Wow. And um, I just got it funded, so we're gonna try to shoot it in September, hopefully. Congratulations! So that's that's been on um, on my mind right now. So you're you're gonna be diving full in on entertainment, continuing this path. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this is you know it's people think like entertainment is just this 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 like thing that's like unattainable, but it literally is just it's just a job. This is my job. Just like it, just like um, when, when someone's a doctor, mm -hmm. and how it how, like how, how tough it 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 takes for a person to become that. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing. It's just whatever you choose to do, you want to do, you can go and do it. Mm -hmm. As long as you you know think of it as uh, this is my career, mm -hmm. and this is my career, and my car career is just all about the ebb and flows of not booking things and booking things and. And so, yeah, this is just, this is the path, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have another question in regards to career, because I think, I like how you talked about how, like, yes, acting's super cool. I mean, for many of us, it's like we see all these superstars on Netflix or on TV. It's like, wow, I want to be like them too. But we also forget that that's their career and that's yeah. their career path. There's ups and downs for everyone, regardless of what you're doing with life. But I also think that for many of us here, mentors play a really important role in our careers and helping us find our path and helping us navigate struggles and obstacles that we do overcome. So can you share if you have any mentors that you've come across in your career that have helped you really navigate and find the best way out when things get tough? Um, I, I take a acting class um, every Monday mm -hmm. and he's been my teacher and, and mentor for the last maybe six years. Mm -hmm. He's the one that pretty much um, blew my mind about what acting was and it's not necessarily like acting isn't it, it's it's more of a philosophy and how you think about life, mm -hmm. and so I think once he changed my paradigm about how I felt about um, about my career and about acting, that's when things started started happening. So I, I I owe it all to him. His name's Stuart Rogers. If you guys are ever in, in LA and want to take a class, he's he's amazing. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I'm sure for many of us here, we all have our own mentors that have really helped shape us. And I think having someone who's been there before, who's had that experience, who can then share so you don't have to repeat the same mistakes is super, mm -hmm. super critical. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, the last question I have for you is in regards to um, things that you wish you knew. The things that you wish you knew before you started out on your path. What are the things that you would like to share here uh -huh. today with us? You know what? I don't. That's that's an interesting question because I feel like I, if I did know those things, I wouldn't end up where I am right now. And I feel like there's lessons in really not knowing. I feel like that's maybe 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 this is, maybe I would want to know that not knowing is okay, and I that 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 leads to better questions, and better questions lead to. Um, I don't know, more interesting doorways to open. So I feel like, you know, when people already know things, like I know everything, I know this, they, they, they sort of stay where they're at. And I feel like if we live in them, um, if we just always live in curiosity and we just, we just really believe that we don't know much, I think that can lead us to more gold. I guess my last, last question, my actual last question is, what exactly is the best piece of advice that you've received? It could be from your mentor, it could be anyone in passing. I th um, it's to be in acceptance of whatever it is that you're feeling. Not to push it away, but to, to embrace it. Hmm. I feel like in the beginning of um, my career as an artist, you know, when, when, when you perform and you do stuff, you, you get nervous and you try to push that feeling away. You don't like you don't want it. But I think once someone told me, once you just accept what that is and use it, then it benefits you. I think I think just to be in acceptance with whatever is happening in the moment instead of trying to be somewhere else or feel something else, just feel what you're feeling. And I think that will lead you to um, wherever you need to go. 
in your opinion, what makes a great uh, actor or actress? It's just like um, training or talents or you know or opportunity. I think it's it's a it's a mixture. It's definitely a mixture of your talent plus plus your hard work, and how how willing you are to dive into situations or circumstances um, that you're not comfortable with. I feel like there are different approaches to acting. Some people just perform, which is performance. Uh, some people utilize things from their past, and I feel like some people just legitimately try to f be that person and try to understand what this person is going through. I think for me, I mean, it's you know, it's uh, people have different opinions about it, but I think that's what makes um, someone more interesting to watch when everything is not prepared, when it's just, this is how I'm feeling and I'm gonna act accordingly. And those are the people that I feel like are dangerous actors, yeah. So you mentioned that when you, you didn't tell your parents that you were going to into theater until you were driving to college. Uh -huh. So just curious, what were you gonna major in originally? Uh, English. I okay. Yeah. English and education. What made you cho choose English in the first place? I, I really enjoyed writing in high school, and you know, I just I, I liked writing. And I'm, I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, because when you go to when you when you study theater in a college like UC Irvine, it ends up becoming a writing major anyway, because all you're doing is reading and and writing. You're not even acting. Like, why am I spending so much money here? <laughs> What what drew you to the role that you play in Wu Assassins? Like, was there something in particular that you were just drawn to or attracted to? Um, I think it's just um, what draws me to characters like that is if you meet a guy like that in uh, in your everyday life, you have judgments about that kind of a person, and. I just want people to be able to empathize with with someone like this. So if you watch someone like this on screen, you can feel for him. And and I, I don't know. I think that's the responsibility of the actor to create empathy. And so that's like the furthest, you know, person that I can choose to to make someone think differently about people like that in their lives. I'm curious about the audition process. It sounds mm. like there are many rounds. And are you asked to read lines? Are you asked to talk about your approach to the character? What does that look like? Um, you get sides. And sides are just um, maybe three or four pages of the script, sometimes more. Um, you, you, you get the scene down. You memorize it however you do. And when you go in, it, there's just the casting director. There's a camera and there's someone that reads it with you, and then you just do it. And then sometimes that's it. If they're curious, they'll, they'll talk to you a little bit, but usually you're just in and out, and it's just it's your chance to show them that, you know, show them what you got, which is cool. You know, sometimes people can, can be so um, scared of auditions, but, but once you realize that you get a chance to, you know, you get to perform right now, then, that, then the fear sort of goes away. Um, I read somewhere that when you had to go to the auditions, they would ask you to dance or whatever. What would you show them? And I know you didn't like it because you eventually took it off your uh -huh. resume, but would you do like a... I wouldn't do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so the thing was I went to an audition and then I, I wrote America's Best Dance Crew as one of my um, credits. And and so they get so they get so excited about it. and. And they're like, dance, can you dance? I'm like, I'm not here for that. And so, but, but this is when I had like a weird relationship with dancing and I just wanted to push it aside and start focusing more on acting because it just, it just took me away from it so much. But, but now I realize, I, I guess that's sort of one regret. I wish I married both of them together and continued to bring it into like, you know, merge both of the art forms instead of segregating them. Well, your movie, hint, hint, lots of opportunities. Yeah, there's, it, it's going to be, there's dance in oh, it. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah.
Hi, I think it's really interesting that your mom was okay with you majoring in English in the first place. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I majored in literature and music and was heavily criticized by a lot of Asian parents for mm -hmm. being highly impractical. I guess that's why I ended up here. Um, <laughs> my question is, how do you explain the value of what you're doing to you know, Asian parents or you know, people who might not understand? Um, when I explained it to my mom, it w I remember the night too, it was, um, we were just getting into an argument and then I, I just told her about why I decided to do this and it had to do deal with me getting arrested and we got into deep detail about, you know, how I felt about that psychologically and this is what I had to do. This is what what I was meant to do. And I think after that conversation, she she sort of let things slide a little bit more. Actually piggybacking off of that, um, I know right now like there's a really big push to put, um, especially for young kids to go into STEM and to not go into like the arts as much. So what's some advice or like what are some things that you would say to people um, to kind of illustrate like that there is like what I get I have a hard time wording this question um, but like what to other people would you say like here's the value that having the arts around and having the arts in your life and like actually being maybe one of those majors can actually benefit you I think if you if you really love doing it this 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 kind of art you're gonna make it happen and if, it, if it's just some if it's just some small hobby you want to do on the side like that's cool too but you know if this is really your passion you're gonna make it happen it's like one of those things where there's no other choice there's nothing else I can do except this and I, I feel like one of the benefits of doing something that you really truly love doing and getting better at it is like it's fun it's like you're gonna be happy and you're gonna be a you're gonna be able to spread that happiness to the people around you and help other people to um, I guess figure out what 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 they like to do in their um, artistic inclinations. I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question. Not really. <laughs> like, is it more is it is it more like how do you convince someone that this is an okay path? I guess I guess to the people that want to do it, but then they they don't think it's a practical thing. I think I think you should just dive into it because no matter what, when you get older, you're gonna have some kind of regret, and you can't. You'll probably do it when you're older, yeah. But I I just feel like because sometimes I'll see I'll see my my uncle like he starts pulling out all these instruments and he's trying to play like at his age right now and uh, and it j you just can tell that he wanted to do this when he was younger but he never did and you know that he made his kids do it and he, he, even my dad you know he 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 started he started dancing later on in life i don't know how it would have affected him if he started doing that earlier and i don't know i just believe in just doing what what you want to do, you only have one life, you know, you might as well just go all out and have some fun. How do you prepare for a role? First, I think about the beliefs of that person. What does that person um, believe about certain circumstances that are happening to that person? Um, it's pretty much me in my head. Let's say for let's say for this uh, for for Tommy and Wu Assassins. I would just start off. I'm a fuck up. No one, no one fucking cares about my opinions. And then I would just find different, different things and just keep going, just circling around beliefs about what I think about, man, I love my sister. Why did I fuck my sister over? That was fucked up. But I'm addicted to this thing and I want to try to, I want to, try to stop, but I can't. Why, why can't I stop? What is it about me that, that I can't stop? And so it's just spending time in that headspace until you just can't take it anymore. 
just do that for, for a good few minutes and it changes how, um, how the lines come out. Because, you, you know, the lines are just lines. Like, who cares about the lines? It's, it's really what's in between the lines. It's really what's underneath everything. And so you have to build the subconscious of that character. And you have to really just get really messy. I think that's the only way you can, um, um, when, when a t character actually comes out. I don't know. I feel like every, you know. Every time I work on something, I if it's a if it's a bad character or a character that's going through something, I just you know you just have to thank, thank, you know, thank God that it's if this is in your life, and then you just you can snap back into you know who you are, and be grateful for what you do have. And if they're fun characters, hey, they're just they're fun. I have a quick question. Do you have a favorite character? As, so we talked about Wu Assassin a lot, but you have had other gigs as well. So any favorites? There were two plays that I really enjoyed. And um, those characters were really fun to explore. Um, one of the plays was called Viet Gone, and the other play was called um, The Great Leap. And yeah, I think those were. What's exciting about theater is, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just one take. You know, there's there's no stop and go, and um, <clears throat> and there's an audience too. So when you when you feel the audience, when you feel the audience learn something that you didn't even know, you can learn something too at the same time, and that's a very powerful feeling. And so I think that's what's different from um, film and theater. So what about those two specific plays you called out? Like, what about that role that you played what was so interesting and memorable for you? Um, I think it's because I get to tap into um, my comedic capabilities. I feel like when I'm on when I'm doing film, I usually get cast as um, the fucked up kid, and on and on theater, I feel like they just they, there's more liberty to to make this guy just you know more fun and um, lively and humorous, and it's it's just fun to to explore those characters. Yeah. Uh, so earlier you said that acting is a philosophy. I was mm -hmm. wondering if you could explain that a little bit more. You know, it's, it's all about how we, you know, how we think about life and our beliefs about people. Everything is, I feel like, is a belief, not necessarily a fact, you know, and um, I think once you, you know, when you, when you dive into to different characters, it, you, it's not necessarily like, I guess it's changing the way your your paradigm about how these characters, how how you view these characters, and I feel like, in that way, you know, art is philosophy too, and it's just it, it just constantly it's it constantly constantly makes us think about life. I feel like, and I, I feel like it that I feel like acting does that a lot because that's that's all you're doing. You know, it's not necessarily memorizing the lines and doing performance. It's it's really understanding human nature and trying to share that with other people. Um, so to be able to juggle the different projects that you have, like the TV show, uh, the movie, um, I presume you got to maintain a high level of energy and have a good work-life balance. Um, c can you share any of your personal habits or routines to be able to keep up <clears throat> that high energy that you need? It's tough. Um, there are... <laughs> I, I try my best. I feel like every new year is is a uh, is a resolution to to really have more of that energy and do better. But you know, I always find myself um, back on the floor trying to struggle to get up. But things that help me are, um, um, I guess, time for myself, reading, um, meditating, um, exercise. Like I have to be physically active. Um, that's just a must. And yeah, I think I think physical activity is actually really huge, especially for me because I come from a, like a movement background. So when I when I don't move and I'm like not really doing much and I'm not eating healthy, it really affects how I think about my work and everything. And and for me, this is different for other people, but I I, I need to have things not so cluttered. 
uh, around like my house because if they are, then it, it takes away from me being able to clutter my mind because it's already so cluttered when I have characters in my head. So when, I, when the less clutter there is, the more clutter I can put in here. And yeah, that gives, gives me energy too, just having a clean space and good work environment. Um, I just want to say I'm really excited that you're here. I think that, like you said, in the past two years, we're seeing a lot more Asians and Asian Americans in, in mass media and entertainment. It's really exciting to see. Um, my question is, we've heard recently some Asian American actors complaining or voicing that they're often typecast. Mm -hmm. And you even mentioned that you're, you know, sometimes in in, in um, movies versus theater, your typecast is like the fuck up or you know, the messed up kid. Do you worry about that long term wise, career wise? No, not at all. Okay. I feel like, I mean, you can either, I mean, we can complain about it. We should make a difference and, and do something about it. But man, if, if, this, if these are the roles, just do them. Like do them really well, better than other people. And people will see that and they'll put you in other things, you know, as long as you just continue to do good work. Uh, regardless of whether or not you get typecast as, typecasted as a, a villain or, you know, just, I, I mean, that's just how I feel right now. My ideas may change later, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I'm um, similar to that question. You mentioned that, I mean, I would agree there's also has been a lot of progress in the last two years, but would also agree, would love to see more. So more realistically speaking, what's your vision for the path to enough for the right amount of progress for it ha for the representation to be pretty fair. Um, of course, obviously for all minorities, but especially for us. And then second, how do you see your role hopefully moving um, progress forward? Um, my role as in me as a person? Um, yeah, person, yeah, yeah. actor, just um, whatever your contributions. I feel like just filmmakers need to make more parts um, for Asian Americans. Like Asian American filmmakers need to step up and not write movies that are just so, um, quote unquote Asian American. They should just be normal people, like going through normal day like things. And I feel like the the more the more content like if more content like that is out there, then more people will be willing to to see Asian Americans do just everyday things. And um, you know that's why I'm writing a, a movie. You know I wanna I want to. I want to change the the idea that people have um, about Asian Americans, because I want to change the idea of how how I have it too. Because when I see Asian Americans on TV, I'm like, whoa, that's jarring, and that's weird. I shouldn't feel like that, mm -hmm. and so I don't, you know, I don't like that feeling. Thank you so much for like being here. I think that this is actually a huge impact, specifically for even like the Asian Group Network community, because a couple of things that we think about is just like how do we shift from like a fixed mindset to a growth mindset, and which is very evident here. I can feel it, I can hear it, and I can see it. Um, and in a way, you've you've pursued your life, and you have purpose, and you're happy, and I can see that. And so, how would you? define your own purpose and your own happiness? Because I, I can say it here, you're happy and- No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am not happy. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, I think, you know, some days, some days are good, some days aren't so good, you know? And it really is just, I go back to like being in acceptance of everything. Like things will pass. Like if you're having a shitty day, it's gonna pass. Like next week is gonna be amazing and you're gonna tell all your friends how amazing it is and you're just gonna forget how shitty it was. But when it's shitty, you're just gonna forget about how great things were before. And so I forget what, what was the question again. Um, it was- <laughs> How do you define your own happiness? Like what, uh -huh. yeah. I think, I think it's that, it's being in that acceptance and knowing that how you're feeling isn't necessarily who you are and it's just, um, this is what it is, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much again, Lawrence, for thank coming, you. joining us at Talks at Google. So big round of applause, please, for our star.